Hi, I'm Greg Dell with Attorneys Dell and & Schaefer, and today Alexander Palomar and I are going to discuss a recent case that came out of the Oklahoma Federal Court. Um, it was a case against the Lincoln National Life Insurance Company, which is becoming one of the larger disability companies, probably moving themselves into the top five since they recently acquired the Liberty Mutual Disability Division, which had a nice size block of uh, short-term and long-term disability claims. So. This was a case that was a victory for um, a plaintiff, uh, for a claimant. And uh, tell us a little bit about the case and what we think some of our viewers could learn from this case. Certainly. Whenever there's a victory and whenever there's a loss, there's always something to, to learn from each case. And we're always obviously reviewing as much case law as we can because we can use it for our appeals or use it for our own litigation cases. Uh, this case out of Oklahoma was a positive one. For a little background, this um, person worked at, at a hospital. She's a radiologic technologist worked at a hospital for a bunch of years and uh, unfortunately for her, actually fortunately for her, she was covered under a long-term disability insurance policy, but unfortunately for her, she had to make a claim under the policy. Um, this was back in 2011, she made a claim. At, at first, the claim was denied, uh, filed an initial appeal, claim was um, overturned and benefits were initially paid for 36 months. And like most long-term disability insurance policies, this policy had what's known as a change in definition of disability, that after a certain amount of time, uh, what it means to be disabled changes. So this, in this policy is actually uh, one of the better ones. There's actually 36 months. You know, we often see 24 months, sometimes as little as 12 months. This policy was, had 36 month change in definition of disability. At that point, uh, the insurance company did what, it, what they typically do is, and they denied the claim at that change in definition of disability. Uh, they relied upon a doctor review and the doctor said, oh, I think that she can do sedentary work. Um, and she, they, they never did an independent exam of her? Never an independent exam, just a, a quote-unquote independent physician or consultant review, uh, where they just essentially review medical records. She filed her own appeal, um, gave some, some basic arguments. The appeal was denied. Uh, with the second denial, they relied upon another doctor review um, and, and also a, trans, uh, a skills analysis to see what job she's able to do. They found some sedentary job she can do. She filed a third appeal. Um, and with the third appeal, she actually did a lot of work in this appeal. She got good doctor support. She actually did a functional capacity evaluation. She sent in MRI records and whatnot to prove her osteoarthritis and her, and her spine and back conditions. And um, the FCE was very supportive of her claim. Uh, her doctor was supportive of her claim, essentially stating that while she could maybe sit six hours a day, she suffers from a lot of pain. It's going to cognitively affect her ability to work. Uh, she's going to miss many days per month, a few days per week each time if she tries to work 40 hours per week. But unfortunately for her, after another consultant review, uh, the insurance company again upheld the, the decision to deny the claim and uh, the lawsuit filed. So a lawsuit was filed in Oklahoma federal court. And, and obviously, as we said earlier, the judge ruled favorably for the claimant. And this case is kind of unique. It doesn't happen very often nowadays. In some states, it's becoming more often. But this policy out of Oklahoma did not have what's known as a discretionary clause in it. And that's important for disability insurance claims. Now, unfortunately, in most policies nowadays, if it's legal in the state where the policy is issued, they're going to have discretionary clauses because it gives so much strength to the insurance company's ability to approve and deny claims. And what a discretionary clause does, essentially it gives the discretion to the insurance company to interpret the policy and then to make a decision regarding the, uh, the claim for benefits. And the other thing that it does though on the back end for litigation purposes is that instead of a judge reviewing your lawsuit and saying, I find this person disabled, they should win and get benefits, it doesn't happen in ERISA claims where there's discretionary clauses. In order for a plaintiff to prevail, when there's a discretionary clause, they have to prove, one, that they are disabled. If they prove that the judge agrees they're disabled, they don't necessarily win. Then the judge has to agree that the decision by the insurance company was arbitrary and capricious. You can Google arbitrary and capricious. It's a very high standard to accomplish in the legal field. It's hard to win these cases because it's an arbitrary and capricious standard when there's a discretionary clause. This case, thankfully, did not have a discretionary clause. So the judge got to review it de novo which essentially means the judge gets to review it like it's the first time someone reviewing it and he or she gets to make a decision whether he or she believes that the person is disabled. The judge finds the person is disabled under the terms of the policy, in this instance, whether the person can perform the duties of any occupation. The judge finds that the person does not have the ability to perform any occupation, then the person wins. So in this instance, the judge you know, thought they did an okay job with reviewing the claim and doing these consultant reviews. They didn't really find any fault with the consultant reviews. 
Now, the one thing I failed to mention earlier is that this claimant, not only did she get long-term disability benefits from the insurance company, she also got awarded Social Security disability benefits, which we all know it takes some time to get approved, and, and, and they have a hard, you know, a, a heavy uh, denial rate in denying such claims. So not only did the insurance company find her disabled, Social Security also found her disabled. So, so two different entities that are separate and apart found her to be disabled. Now with the denial letters that I previously mentioned, the insurance company, and you'll see it in, in probably your denial letter if you have one, and you've got approved for Social Security, this may be a paragraph that's what, five sentences, four sentences long, it says, we took into account you got Social Security benefits, uh, there's different uh, parameters and different reasons why we approve claims and they approve claims. So while we took into account, we don't find it you know, convincing for us to uphold your, your claim. And more often than not, when I review uh, claim files, the Social Security uh, Administration's claim file is not even in the insurance company's claim file. So what kind of review did they actually do of the Social Security uh, disability claim and, and approval? Well, in this instance, they didn't really do much of a review. Um, they, they included the typical five sentence paragraph to, in the denial letter. And in this instance, that's what the judge found fault on. The judge actually ruled in favor of this plaintiff, not saying that, you know, that their reviews that they had conducted uh, by the physician consultants weren't enough, because um, the judge obviously found that her own doctor's reviews, the MRIs, the FCE was convincing as well, but the judge found most fault with the fact that the insurance company uh, didn't do a true review of the Social Security decision. And the judge actually even wrote, Lincoln gives mere lip service to the Social Security award letter and found that not to be enough. And the judge um, pointed out how getting Social Security benefits, their standard is not an easy one to accomplish. And, and Lincoln cannot just go about saying, we took into account and really not take into account. So this, instance, this case is actually unique because of the de novo review and because uh, this judge actually was a very good judge and, and, and saw through the poor review that Lincoln did in this case. So did the judge award benefits or remand for further review? The judge awarded benefits in this case. So the person is now back on claim. Unfortunately, you know, not, it doesn't mean that everything's going to end well because Lincoln can still do another review in the future and deny this case again. But for the time being, she remains on claim. But she does have very good doctor support the FCE, FCE um, results, and if she keeps on making her claim stronger and stronger by submitting more documentation with her claim, maybe she can stay on claim to the age 65. All right. All right, well, thank you for that um, very detailed and informative summary. And uh, I like that this case was unique because not a lot of claimants have the opportunity to even have a Social Security decision available yet because they're often denied before Social Security even gets approved. So in this case, having the approval of Social Security was very helpful for her. For sure. So if anyone has a claim with Lincoln National, uh, Liberty Mutual, any of the disability insurance companies, our lawyers are available to assist you anywhere in the country. We always offer a free initial phone consultation and we look forward to the opportunity to help you.